Hello, in this video I will show you how to get started with the Lucy WebSocket extension. I have already went ahead and downloaded uh, Lucy Express, so I will just extract it locally here. And just before I start Lucy Express, I would like to make a quick change here. Um, actually, let me open Sublime. Here. So, just a quick change. What we'll changes from start to run so that it opens in the same console window. So, let me open Conemo here and run startup. And that will start up uh, Lucy Express with all the default settings. So let's go to localhost at port 8888, which is default. And usually the first run takes uh, a little bit longer than in, uh, subsequent runs because some extensions are being installed and stuff like that. Okay, so this is the welcome screen for uh, Lucy Express. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go into the web admin. You can install the extension either, either on the web admin or the server admin. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, I will use the web admin. Installing the extension is very straightforward. You come here. Let me zoom in, actually make it a bit better. So you get into extension applications. And here you see a list of all the installed extensions and then the uninstalled extensions. Uh, we will select the Lucy WebSocket extension, click install. And now you can see that the WebSocket extension is in the top section above the not installed. So we know it's been installed. Another thing that I recommend doing, especially when developing in the beginning and debugging with the WebSocket, is to set up a logger for WebSocket. So we just create a new log, call it WebSocket. The name is important, so it has to be WebSocket. Uh, and we'll change the log level to debug. Let's update this and we can see here that it's set with log level debug, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so now let's go into the web apps directory and the root directory inside that. This is where Lucy Express runs its, uh, its code, everything that we see here in on this page. I will create here a new directory, call it examples, and inside that another one, call it echo. We will do a, an echo a WebSocket example. Now, the code for this example is also available in the wiki where you can find much more information, the wiki of the extension. And the example echo shows that code that we're going to use here. So let's go here. And we'll go into the directory that we just created and create a new file here. Let's save it and call it echo listener. CFC. It will be a component and you should really uh, go through the documentation. What we're going to do here is we will create a listener component according to the listener component API. Um, 
and in it we will implement the method on message. So let's just go here and we'll do function on message and the arguments as you can see there uh, as you can see in the API are WebSocket, message, session, session scope, and application scope. The arguments, by the way, are passed by name. So even if you put different names here, they will still use the names that are in the documentation. So uh, it's best if you stick to the naming convention that's there for uh, less confusion. So we have WebSocket, message, session scope, and application scope and here like any other echo server what we'll do is pretty much return a message say something like um, echo from Lucy let's put server dot Lucy dot version and maybe we'll put the original message here so we'll put arguments that message so this is it for the echo listener the next thing we'll do is uh, create a simple uh, script let's make it index.cfm and in that one all we'll do is uh, register the WebSocket listener. So we're going to use for that the WebSocket register function. It takes two arguments, endpoint and a listener component, an instant of an instance of the listener component. So what we can do here is something like script. You can of course do it in tags, but I prefer script myself. And we'll do. Uh, web socket register and let's put it at ws slash echo that would be our endpoint and we'll create a new instance of listener component and we'll just do something like oops I'll put that registered uh, WebSocket endpoint at here. Great. So now I'll go again to the browser. I'll open localhost at the Lucy port. And I'll go to examples slash echo. and that didn't work so let's try to figure out why websocket register is not defined oh of course okay so it helps if you do cf script rather than script this is not a javascript this is a lucy <laughs> this is a lucy code so let's hit Right, so it's not listener component, it's echo listener. Okay, so now we registered WebSocket endpoint at this address. So that means that our server side for the WebSocket is now configured and registered. Uh, one thing we did was to set up the logger so now would be a good time let's let's look here real quick and we'll go into um actually it's still inside root web inf lucy logs and here we can see the websocket log that we created which right now is empty because we didn't really do anything But 
But now let's open this tab and create a WebSocket client in JavaScript. So I will say var ws echo equals new WebSocket and pass the full URL. The protocol here is WS local loss. This is, you see, I gave it from before. So this created the WebSocket connection. If I click on it and I'm on the network tab, I can see more information about it. So now let's set up some, an event handler in JavaScript. So what I'm doing here, I pretty much created a simple uh, log function that takes an argument and outputs to the log. And then we set a on open, on message, on error, and on close, all of them to point to that log. So any event that will be called in JavaScript will simply output the information to the uh, console. So let's run this and that worked. So now we can use the uh, WS echo uh, object to send a message. So for example, we can send hello. And what we can see here is that in the green, you can see what JavaScript sent in white you see what was received. You also can see it in the console here because we're sending it to the log via the, the log uh, event handler that comes here. And you can see that the message that we got back is echo from Lucy and the version 51318 in this case, hello. If we go to the log, you can see here a bunch of information about what happened in the extension. So you can see that it was uh, the connection uh, went through the handshake, CFID was identified for the client, and then it tells you, for example, that on handshake is not implemented in the listener because we didn't implement anything. Where is it? We only implemented the on message method. So on end check is not implemented, on open is not implemented, but then on message returned this message. And that's what we received also on the JavaScript end. Um, so this is pretty much it. I mean, we can do a little bit more stuff here. Uh, we can send, let's say, in a loop. We can send a bunch of messages. So this is a for loop. And then we'll use the WS echo send. And we, sh we can say, actually, we can use the uh, ES6 uh, template literals and use here, said it earlier. So if I send this, you see here all of the messages that were received, all of the event handlers and messages that was, were received. Here you can see all of the ones that were sent, message zero, message one, and then you can see all of the ones that were received uh, they were sent in a tight loop, so all of them were sent first, and then only the event handlers were uh, handled in JavaScript. That's how JavaScript works. Um, if you look now at the log, you can see all of those messages that came in until message 99. We sent 200 messages, but with the uh, uh, base uh, zero index, so the 100th message is number 99. And uh, actually nice, another nice thing to see is that if we send, let's say 
this allow from JavaScript at and then we send the tick count. Let's send this. So it shows you the tick count. If we can, if we want, we can modify. Um, can modify this the echo listener and add the tick count from Lucy. Now, once we modify the echo listener, we need to register the new. We need to instantiate the new object of that and register it. So, right now, if I reload this page, this script that uh, registers it again, it will create uh, the new object and register it um, but the reload destroyed all of the javascript that i had the whole environment so if i type now um, ws echo there is no such thing as ws echo so what i need to do is create it again again this is javascript stuff so just create ws echo and the log messages and now if I'll send a, a message with the tick count from JavaScript, then if we look here, we can see that the tick count on JavaScript when it was sent ended with 2380 and <clears throat> it was received three milliseconds later. So we can see that things happen really fast. I mean, Let's see it again. Yeah, now it's two milliseconds. Sometimes it's even less than a, a millisecond. Uh, of course, I'm running everything on the same local machine, so there's no network latency, but still it's nice to see that things happen in a matter of milliseconds uh, round trip. That's because the WebSocket connection is kept open and there is no overhead of creating HTTP requests with all of the stuff that goes with it so i hope that this clarifies some uh, things with the websocket uh, extension and websockets in general and thank you for watching